It's engineering confession time, folks. Anybody besides me ever suffer from um, NIH? Yeah, you know, not invented here syndrome. It's pretty common amongst us engineers. We think we can do anything, so we try to do everything. Why buy a computer when you can easily build your own? Why have that cable guy install your DVR when you can pretty easily handle it? Why pay the plumber when you can get that thing out of your... Oh, dude, never mind. Pay the plumber. (laughs) At work? It can be more like... Why buy an FPGA prototyping solution when I could just design my own board and, um, yeah, see, pay the plumber line above. (laughs) Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and trust me, you do not want to build an FPGA prototype from scratch. My guest today is Jürgen Jaeger from Cadence Design Systems, and we're going to look at Proteum S1. Cadence is really awesome, way better than you could build it yourself. It doesn't require a plumbing snake. Proteum S1 FPGA prototyping solution. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about Proteum S1 FPGA-based prototyping solution from Cadence Design Systems. Hi, Jürgen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. I'm glad to be back. Okay, Jürgen, we have talked about Proteum before, but it's been a while. So let's jump in with the reasons design teams need to address performance in verification. Certainly. As you know, the old saying, faster is better, is particularly true when it comes to verification in today's highly complex chips and systems. Especially the ever-increasing embedded software contents and complexity make the need for speed more pronounced than ever. And also, some may say otherwise, there is no one-size-fits-all, or as we say in Germany, Eierlegende Wollmilchsau. <laughs> as a user, you should always strive to have the right tool for the job and the best-in-class tool for sure. the job. Now, FPGA-based prototyping plays an increasingly critical role in that, as it satisfies more than any other tool the speed requirements to verify software and hardware concurrently and consequently users are starting to use prototyping early in the design cycle and way beyond hardware tape out all right so can you give us an overview of fpga based prototyping what does it really do for me well in a nutshell it enables the user to map a chip design into one or more fpgas okay. long before that chip has been put into silicon. Sure. And because FPGAs are reprogrammable, the FPGA implementation stays in sync with the progressing maturity of the design. This FPGA prototype, as it runs at tens of megahertz, and because it is real hardware, allows the user now to connect real interfaces, for example, a keyboard, a touchscreen, a USB port, and so on. And most importantly, to run the real firmware and software stack on it. Okay. So in a sense, a FPGA-based prototype can be a pre-production version of the actual chip and system, giving the user a true hardware and software verification and integration platform. So far, the good, right? Right. Well, not so fast. When you ask actual users, then they will tell you it's great as soon as the prototype is up and running, But boy, getting to that point is really, really hard. Ah, I see. So prototyping, as I'm sure other people in the audience will think this too, has always had a perception of being difficult. But Jürgen, is it really? Uh, Let's look at why prototyping has this hard-to-do perception. Sure. A lot is involved in getting a prototype up and running. ASIC logging can be, and usually is, very complex, with hundreds or even thousands of clocks something FPGAs cannot handle. Memories are many and in all shapes and sizes in ASICs. Again, something FPGAs cannot handle. Then, because you are prototyping the whole chip or system, all kind of interfaces must be connected, and those have speed requirements. The FPGA-based prototype is used as a verification tool, though the appropriate hardware and software debug requirements have to be met and have to be there. And the list goes on and on. So no wonder FPGA-based prototyping has that reputation. Right. So you guys address this with an end-to-end solution, right? That is correct. The adding all these requirements together 
leads to prototyping bring up time that are usually measured in months, which is of course a long time in today's fast-paced industry. Yeah. But there's a cure to it. It's called Prodium S1 and it's Cadence's recently introduced FPGA-based prototyping platform. Prodium S1 is uniquely addressing many of the previously mentioned challenges, automates many aspects of the prototype bring-up process, and as a result is reducing bring-up time for many months to just a few weeks, often just days. All right, Jürgen, but where's the proof in the pudding here? Do you got some real numbers for me? You know, I actually anticipated that question, so I brought some reinforcement. Excellent. What you're seeing here in this graphic is real data from real users using Proteum S1. And it's documenting how much time each one of them saved by moving from the previous, more traditional, non-Proteum prototype to Proteum S1. As you can see, captured with the gray bars, average spring up time was in the order of 20 weeks. 20 weeks? Those are five months. Wow. With Proteum S1, though, average bring up time is just two weeks. I think the numbers speak for themselves. I think you're right. So uh, how do we go about doing that? It starts with Proteum, unlike other prototyping solutions, not requiring any or only very minor changes to the ASIC RTL. Okay. And that's a big deal by itself already. Not only does it save months of bring up time, but it also assures that what you prototype is actually the real design and not something maybe similar. Nice. One of the key technologies we deploy in Proteum S1 is our proprietary clock implementation technology. Not only does it eliminate for good all FPGA clocking limitations, but it also guarantees FPGA time enclosure through removal of any FPGA hold time violations by construction. This clocking technology is also the foundation for many of the advanced use modes and debug capabilities in Proteum S1. All right, Jürgen, let's talk about memories. Memories are like snowflakes. They all look alike, and yet they are all very different. You're very right with that. Mapping these many different memories with different number of ports, different array size, different data bus, different address bus, and so on. You get the picture, I think. Yeah. Into the fixed structure of two-port FPGA memories can be time-consuming, error-prone, and cumbersome. And it can take weeks or even months to do, though. In Proteum S1, we have an integrated memory compiler that maps ASIC memories automatically into FPGA internal resources. Okay, so tell me more about memory support for my prototype. Well, it doesn't stop there with Proteum S1. Sometimes the amount of memory inside the FPGA simply isn't enough especially when the design requires DDR-type large memories. Mm -hmm. Consequently, we have expanded our automatic memory compiler to also work with external bulk memories on physical memory daughter cards. Oh, okay. The first option is to add external SRAM. In our case, 128 megabytes per card, and of course, multiple cards can be plugged into Proteum S1. This X SRAM option is 100% transparent for the user. It simply increases the FPGA memory from about 80 megabits to 128 megabytes. Just like that, no user interaction required. Nice. The second option, the XDRAM card, contains 16 gigabytes of DDR memory, plus a smaller FPGA, which has two major functions. First, it provides a memory speed bridge, meaning that it allows to operate the 16 gigabyte DDR memory at full speed and fully within memory spec, independent on how fast or slow the prototype actually runs. It is a memory protocol converter that makes the 16 gigabyte DDR memory look to the user design, like for example an LPDDR2 or 3 or 4, a DDR3 or 4, a HBM or a UFS memory. So in this case, one could say one size fits all actually. Okay. Last but not least, these external memory solutions provide full memory backdoor access, upload and download at runtime, something that is, of course, also supported with FPGA internal memory. Now, the whole reason I have a prototype is to be able to debug my software and to debug interactions between hardware and software. So what are the debugging capabilities like? Absolutely right. I mean, in the end, a Proteum S1 system or any prototype system is a verification tool. 
Debug on FPGA-based prototype falls into two major categories. First is the hardware debug, which mostly used when bringing up the prototype and during runtime if something in the RTL design looks suspicious. Okay. For that, Prodium S1 features several unique capabilities. Waveform across FPGAs, giving the user a full design view, always and not just limited single FPGA views. Force and release, which is a very powerful capability to force internal signals into zero or one and release again when desired. This is often used for design configuration, setup, preset, but also for what if analysis during runtime. And third, signal monitoring, which allows a real time monitoring of any key signals in the design. So that's the hardware side of it. Okay. On the software side, running and debugging software on FPGA-based prototype requires totally different things than for hardware debug. Of course, JTAG and newer ports to attach any software debugger, that's the easy one. Here are also some additional things, though, that make a software debugger's life a lot easier. Nice, okay. Backdoor memory access to read out the contents of any memory, internal, XSRAM, XDRAM at any time, and of course, change the contents at any time. For example, upload a new boot code. Okay. Full clock control, meaning the ability to stop and resume the clock at any time. The ability to run, let's say, a 5 million cycle and then stop and look around in the design before resuming. Nice. And of course, full remote access to the Prodium S1 system from anywhere in the world. All right. So let's talk about performance a little bit. With designs growing, we need to be able to maximize our performance as well as getting a fast bring up. Absolutely. Earlier we said faster is better. So how fast can someone expect an FPGA-based prototype to run? Yeah. The answer, like so often, it, it depends. It depends <laughs> okay. on a lot of things. It depends on design size, design architecture, memories, clocks, interfaces, and so on. Our customers are typically bringing up the design on Proteum S1 in phases. The first phase is a fully automatic compile, getting to functionality as quickly as possible. Okay. This first phase also provides a lot of information about performance bottlenecks, which can then be used in a second run to turn on or off certain compiler options for achieving higher performance, still all in a fully automatic mode. If that's not enough, then Proteum S1 also has all the features from more traditional FPGA prototype approaches to manually make design changes and improve performance further. Let's be clear though, such a manual optimization approach can be time consuming and one should always consider upfront if it's worth the effort. Absolutely. Okay, Jürgen, so how does Proteum scale on the hardware side? Talking about design sizes, not all designs are big or small. Therefore, Proteum S1 is not just one system. It is scalable from one FPGA, which can hold up to about 25 million AC gates, all the way to 24 FPGAs, which give you really up to 600 million AC gates. Nice. And all the previous capabilities are, of course, available regardless and no matter the number of FPGAs used in the system. All right, Jürgen, give me the top three reasons I should take a closer look at Proteum S1. Okay, Amelia. Number one is fast bring up time. Days instead of months of bringing up the prototype. Okay, deal. <laughs> Number two, scalability in size and performance. That allows you to prototype any design you want and to achieve any performance that you need to run on. And third are the advanced software debug capabilities, allowing the user to productively prototype and debug the designs. Okay, so... Proteum has been around for long enough where you should have some solid customer experience with it, right? Uh, how's it going? Correct. And in the end, you know, nothing that I say really matters. What matters in the end is how real Proteum S1 users perceive the system and how it helped them to be successful. Microsemi is one of our customers, made the move from traditional FPGA with prototyping, and it has, to quote them, incredibly simplified their prototyping flow. Nice. And you have any other examples? Another customer is AM Logic. AM Logic, by using Proteum S1, has achieved two months faster time to market for their products. And two months faster, that's a big deal and can save you a lot of money or make you a lot of money. Absolutely. And last but not least, Xilinx, you know, the company that really knows 
something about FPGA likes it too. Excellent. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Jurgen. It was fun. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out even more information about the Proteum S1 FPGA-based prototyping solution from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to YouTube, keyword, eejournal, or you can also check out the Chalk Talks section of eejournal.com.